One, two, three, start. All right, so we have the keyboard plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and press Windows D for desktop. All right, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up whatever browser you're using. Chrome is specifically like logged into all her information, etc. So, all right, we're gonna show you how to install Windows 8.1 on a flash drive. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my channel, my second channel, and go to my videos. And then I'm gonna click on the Windows 8.1 uh, install. And then in the description of this video, there is this Windows 7 USB tool. I'll link to it in this video as well. Oh crap. All right, so we'll try this again. We'll keep this tab open for just a little bit. Mute this video. Okay, for this, uh, we can go ahead and hit run or you can save it, it's up to you. Next, install. Finish. All right, we can close out the browser now, and now there's this thing on your desktop. And I have UAC disabled. How you can tell that is user account control settings, and then uh, mine's set to never notify. I'm not recommending you do that. I'm just saying that's what I personally do. And we're gonna plug in our flash drive to the side of the computer here. And then it's going to ask us to open it or not. So <laughs> we can open up the USB tool. And we need to download the Windows 8 ISO. That's, that's, I forgot about that. Windows 8.1. Hey, I can go back to that video. <laughs> oh, it's funny how that works out. And then in here. All right, this is like my fourth attempt. This is the ISO. Uh, if they take this down ever, I will repost a link to it. So you just click that to download and then save as, and we'll save it to the desktop, just to make it easy to find it. And of course, this is going to take a minute, so just be patient with it. Okay, so that's taking entirely too long. I'm gonna go ahead and safely eject this flash drive. And I'm gonna put in this one that has the ISO already on it. Because that's going to transfer to our computer faster than this is ever going to download. I have a really fast connection, but except on this thing, it's just, it's through wireless, so it's not, and it's, it's kind of, an, it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to the desktop, paste it. All right, so that is done. We can go back to, the, we can, uh, of course I gotta eject this flash drive. Give me just a second to do that. You can actually just go here and then go to your computer and then just right click on it and hit eject. Cause that's the drive that has the uh, actual ISO on it. Now it's on our desktop, so we're good to go there. See that's already got stuff on it, but that all that's gonna go away. All right, so now that the file is done downloading and it's on our desktop or copying whatever, transferring, we can open up this Windows 7 USB tool, hit browse, and then go to the desktop, wherever you put your ISO at, and you will see it right there, Windows 8, 64-bit, because this is a 64-bit netbook. So we're gonna go hit open, and then next, and then USB device, and then it's going to say 11 free. Make sure that D is the 16 gig drive, which it is. So we'll close that out, we'll hit begin copying, it's going to erase everything that's on this disk. Just go ahead and press yes again. And then now it's just going to take a minute. Depending on how old your flash drive is, like how slow it is, it depends on how long it's going to take to copy all the files over. So just be patient and let this finish up. All right, as you can tell by the bottom right of the screen where the clock is, this took quite a while. So we are done with this. All you gotta do is reboot your device. Everything, every computer is different. Every computer is different. Sometimes it's F escape, sometimes it's F1, sometimes it's F12, sometimes it's F11. Sometimes you don't even have a button, you gotta go into your BIOS and you've gotta set your you know, thing to boot from that. So every computer is different. This one's F12. And then we'll just go down here to USB storage device, select that, and then we'll move on from there. If all goes well, you should be presented with a fish here in just a moment. 
and there it is. Now please keep in mind, depending on the speed of your flash drive, you may sit at this little guy for quite a moment. I am speeding this footage up, of course. Here you're presented with the screen. Just go ahead and press next and move on to the next part. Click install now. And then when this comes up here in just a moment, you're gonna go ahead and enter the product key. Now the product key is on the actual website. So you'll just type it in manually. What I did was I printed it or wrote it down and then just typed it in with my fingers. When you finally entered in the product key, the next button will appear highlighted and you can press on it and continue to the next part. Continue by accepting the license terms, pressing next and then choosing custom. Now the drive that we're going to be installing Windows 8.1 preview on already has an operating system. So what we're going to need to do is delete all existing partitions, create a new one the maximum size possible, and then continue. Here I'm just formatting the existing partitions. You can do it either way, it's up to you. After pressing next, for the next few moments, it's going to be gathering all the files it needs, installing them, and then you'll see a nice little screen prompting you that your computer needs to reboot. Now please keep in mind, this also depends on the speed of your hard drive. We're using an SSD in this situation, and it also depends on your flash drive, depending on how long it takes those files to copy from your flash drive over to your computer's hard drive or SSD. Congratulations! Once you see the Windows needs to restart to continue screen, you're almost done. You're almost there. You literally have done all the groundwork. Your computer's gonna restart, it's going to install all these updates, and then reboot a couple times, and then it'll finally get to the point where you can actually use your computer. You see this little blue screen right here? You type in the name of your computer and you also choose the color. I like green, so that's what I choose. My wife is going to be using this netbook that we're installing Windows 8.1 on, so we went ahead and gone with her favorite color, purple. And then you connect to your Wi-Fi hotspot for internet. After it checks the things, I go ahead and use express settings. I can always change them later. It's just a quicker way to get into the operating system, instead of fiddling around with a bunch of different screens, not knowing what you are and are not changing. Like, if you're messing something up or not, whatever. Alright, now you're going to need to enter in your Windows Live ID. This is the annoying part. This is the part where you have to have a Windows Live ID to use your computer. It's frustrating, it's annoying, but it is what it is. After you sign in, you can add local users that do not have live accounts. So like if you have kids or etc, they do not have to have Windows Live IDs to have a, an account on the computer you're using. Here it's going to ask you how you'd like to receive your code. If you set it to the default email thing, you just check your email, click the link, and it verifies that the computer that you're setting up Windows 8.1 on. You can go ahead and just press skip for now if you don't have access to your email at the moment. Personally, I just clicked use SkyDrive. I don't know. I just checked it because I wanted to. And then you're welcomed with this little, hi, we're setting things up for you. And just, you know, little disclaimers and etc. And this happens for quite a while depending on how fast or slow your computer is. Really quick, I went ahead and installed this on an old e-machines from like years ago, back when they came with Windows Vista. And I can tell you that it sat at this like installing apps, we're getting things ready, you know, it's just sat at that for like what feels like forever. And on this netbook, since it's an i3 quad core with 8 gigs of RAM and an SSD, it went pretty freaking quick. When it's finally done, you're presented with this nice screen that says let's start. And then it shows your normal Windows 8 desktop. But the beauty of it is, in a little bit, I'm going to show you how to set it towards it automatically goes to your desktop instead of that Windows 8 normal screen that you see the Metro UI. One of the first things I do when I set up a new Windows 7 or Windows 8 computer is I disable UAC, where it never notifies me that I need admin privileges, it's just automatically granted. I'm not recommending everybody do that, it's just something that I do because I've been using the computers for a long time, and I'm not going to screw it up. And I also changed the resolution to 1920 by 1080 as well, which is what my computer supports. And I'm capturing this using my Elgato Game Capture HD, feeding to my computer via HDMI, and etc. The really, really cool thing about Windows 8.1 is if you right click on the little like you bar at the bottom and you choose properties, you can actually go to the navigation tab and go to desktop instead of start when I sign in, show desktop background on start and show apps. So like when you press the start button, it shows a list of your apps and programs, which is really, really cool. Kind of like the old Windows 7 days. 
I'm so, 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 so new to this voiceover stuff. Part of this, I'm using Audacity, and I'm recording, and then editing my recording, exporting to MP3, and then dropping it into Adobe Premiere, and then trying to get everything in sync with what's happening on the screen. And then the other part of it is spent with me using Adobe Premiere Pro's little voiceover tool and talking while I'm watching the footage. But then sometimes some parts take a moment, and I'm just sitting there kind of like twiddle my thumbs like what's gonna happen next and it's I'm just so freaking new to this so when I use Adobe Premiere Pro my volume is a little bit lower and when it goes to Audacity the volume is a little bit higher it's not a huge big difference but I just thought I'd go ahead and throw it out there and let y'all know why it's getting louder and quieter at times if you google Windows 8 auto login there's this super helpful guide by how to geek I will go ahead and link to it in the description below this video right underneath that like button and it just basically walks you through how to get your computer to automatically log in so literally the moment you press the power button on your computer or you restart it you see the little like starting thing and then it immediately goes over to your desktop if you went to the little navigation tab and you changed it and made it do that now I'm not gonna actually show you how I do it because you've got to go into your accounts and you've got to do all that and I've got to blur all that out etc I've already done that in the description of this video there's gonna be a link to the video I posted on my second channel that literally shows it doing nothing but rebooting directly to the desktop and showing how to make it do that so links to that video will be in the description below all right so i did everything that how to geek said to do in their article and again i'll put links to that in the description below and now when i root my computer it automatically freaking goes to the desktop so no more seeing that ugly metro ui when you turn your computer on and if you're someone that actually likes that good for you don't change it to the way I have it it's that freaking simple it's awesome would you look at it guess what that is that is our desktop no Metro UI any more. It's still there, but you don't see it when you restart your computer. Windows 8.1 is looking mighty, mighty fine. My first impressions after using it for a little over a week now, well, actually, on my second channel, youtube.com slash Josh is nice, I did a video on this like the day this became available. I mean, the day. Sorry, Josh, but I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you there. I'm going to let you finish in a moment. <laughs> Kanye West. The reason I'm doing this video this way is because of the fact that it looked terrible. I was pointing my camera at my laptop. Things were not crystal clear. Things looked bad. And since I was able to capture everything crystal clear that was coming out of my laptop via HDMI to my Elgato Game Capture HD to my Asus G74SX Republic of Gamers Gaming Laptop, it looked incredible. And that's why you're able to see the video you're seeing right now, thanks to Elgato and Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, now we're going to get back to where we were. Sorry about that, Josh. So I've been using it ever since then. And my first impressions are, it's freaking awesome. I have really no complaints with it. I do miss the old Windows 7 start thing. You do get that kind of like apps and programs and etc. But it's just not the same exact thing. So I am going to miss that when I do make the switch to Windows 8.1. But I will be doing that. Windows 8.1 is shaping up to be a pretty freaking awesome OS. And I'm glad that Microsoft is listening to everybody's complaints. Kind of like reversing the whole DRM issue on the Xbox One. <laughs> That's going to stir up a mess. <laughs> oh well. Now I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to the Panda. On Twitter, he's been mentioning me back and forth. And he also has a YouTube channel. I'll put his username up on the screen now. Anyways, I'm doing this video for a few reasons. First of all, Windows 8.1 is pretty freaking awesome. Second of all, the quality of this video is a million times better than the quality of my previous video that I posted on my Josh's Nice channel, which I will link to in the description below. Also, if you're someone that's curious and wants to try this out, over the next few days, I'm going to post another video that's going to show you how to make an image of your computer, back it up like as an image, and then restore it. Kind of like an Android backup on Android. Essentially, you're making an exact copy of your hard drive as one file and then you can restore it so like if you try windows 8.1 out and you're like no this isn't for me i'm gonna go back to windows 7 you can restore that and be just like you were day one or you can like back up windows 7 install linux or mac os or any operating system you want to and then you can just restore that image so that video is coming very soon i mean you can make a backup of your computer after you get it set up the way you like it and then if something crashes or something bad happens you can just restore it so that video will become very soon and if you want to see it, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe so that way you don't miss it. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and click that thumbs up button. It's just a little click, but trust me, it goes a long way and it lets you know you enjoyed the video and you want to see more videos like this. One last time, links to everything in the description below. I'm on Vine, Instagram, Twitter, Xbox Live, PSN, pretty much everywhere. Just Google www.joshdew 
and you'll find me. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out.